Hey gorgeous, welcome back to Life and Style. Today's video is going to be my best in beauty for 2017. But I am excited to go through all of these products that I have been absolutely loving or loved in 2017. Um, some were uh, new discoveries, uh, new launches in 2017. Some were that I was just very late to the game, but they ended up being favorites. And some are actually tried and true products that I have been using before 2017, but I just found myself reaching for them constantly throughout the year. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in order um, as I would apply the products to my face and we'll take it from there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start out with primers. I have three primers here. Um, one new one that actually launched in, launched in 2017, I believe, or very late in 2016, but I did just purchase it in 2017. Um, I've been using this now for probably a little over six months or so, and it's the Ordinary's High Adherence Silicone Primer. This is what it looks like. I've used this a couple of times here on my channel. Um, I use it a lot in my everyday life. It's one of those primers that is what it is, a silicone primer. It kind of blurs the skin. It fills in the pores. Um, it feels basically like the very original Smashbox uh, primer, the clear one. That's what got me into primers. And this is exactly what that reminds me of. Um, this just is a really good primer. It does what it says it's going to do. And I feel like it really has um, that staying power so that foundation adheres to the skin after you use this primer. The second primer I have, you already know what it is. If you've watched any of my videos, um, you know that I have a very oily T-zone and this is the most mattifying, most perfect uh, foundation primer I have ever used. And like I said, this is one that I am going to continue to use. It is the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. This primer, if your skin is oily or even just an oily T-zone, is perfection. It goes on the skin, dries, almost instantly and again like i said before it doesn't dry the skin out but it itself the product dries down and becomes sticky almost so that the foundation really sticks to it beautifully i just love the way this wears throughout the day i do find that when i use this i am less oily throughout the day um, you know, if I didn't use it or if I use another primer, I can definitely tell the difference when I'm using this one as opposed to something else. The last primer I have is one that I tend to use during the winter. Now, I actually have um, this on my face, like on my cheeks, chin, nose area, because I do get dry during the winter and it is um, dead up in the winter here in Connecticut. We are um, buried under snow. We had a horrible snowstorm a few days ago, so we are definitely in the depths of winter. And then the Becca Ever Matte that I just talked about, I put that on my forehead because again, I do have an oily T-zone. The one that I am talking about is the Becca First Light Priming Filter, and this is the one in the purple bottle. This comes out with this illumination to your skin. There's no glitter, there's no shimmer, but it just does something to the skin. You can see a little bit of the purple hue, and don't let that scare you when I say that. When I put it on, I have a little bit of that purple tint, but not to the point where your skin looks purple. It's just this uh, luminescence to the skin. In the winter, I find that my skin is very sallow. I don't have a lot of pep to it. I have to, you know, really add bronzer and blusher and all that to kind of pep the skin up. And I like to start out before I actually put on my makeup. This I purchased last winter, so not 2017, but 2016. And I absolutely love the way it made my skin look. I heard people talking about it. I was a little scared to use it, but people were just giving it such fabulous reviews, so I had to use it. It is one of the very best primers as far as, um, you know, kind of bringing the skin to life. It is one of the very best primers that I have ever used. And this is definitely one that I'm going to continue to repurchase because the skin just comes alive when you put it on. We're gonna move on to correctors and concealers. I have two in each category. And again, when you see them, you're gonna know what they are if you've watched any of my videos. So the first one is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluid in Deep Peach. Um, and I said this came out in 2017. It may have come out in 2016, but not the whole of 2016. But I did start using this in 2017. It is by far one of my favorite correctors. I love the way it has the doe foot applicator like their concealer. It just blends out beautifully, covers my dark circles, uh, does increase, isn't overly thick. 
It's just the perfect consistency and blendability is perfect on this product. I am over half done, if not maybe a little more, um, which is huge for me because that doesn't typically happen, but it's just such a good product. The second corrector will come as no surprise. This is one that I have been using for uh, a few years now, but it is just above and beyond just a wonderful, wonderful corrector. It's the LA Girl Pro Conceal High Definition high definition concealer and this is in orange as you can see this is a much deeper shade than the urban decay um, it almost comes out red on the skin but it is absolutely fabulous if you have really dark circles um, or if you're darker in skin uh, you know skin tone is darker because this is bordering kind of like on a brick color it's very very potent uh, the color payoff on this sometimes you you use a corrector and I have in the past that I'm like this does nothing it looks really nice and dark peach in the container um, or in the tube and then when you put it on it is very light I need something that's dark to combat those dark circles this does the trick and I believe it's $4.99 maybe $5.99 the price on this is absolutely right um, I will give you a disclaimer on this uh, use a little bit at a time because you may look it's one of those um, like twist ups or squeeze ups if you could see there and so sometimes you put a little more on the applicator than you need to use this thing is extremely potent you only need a little bit and then just kind of spread it out I just use a um, real technique sponge just dry because they're very soft I use the pointed end and I just blend it out I put a little bit in the inner corner and use that and that is enough to cover up all my dark circles so for the uh, concealers this year, I'm going to talk about the first one that's probably is going to be like no surprise. Everybody's talking about it. It's the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer. When this came out, this basically almost kind of remade and revamped what concealer should be. Um, a lot of people say they don't use this daily because it is full coverage, but it is one of the very best concealers out there. It is thick in the very best way possible, blendable like nobody's business. It just looks gorgeous. It covers everything. When I, I use this a lot in conjunction with the LA Girl um, Corrector, the orange, it is flawless like literally flawless it's just so beautiful I tend to use this a lot in my everyday life if I'm going out and want a full coverage look I will put this under my eyes um, because it just is that good. Right. a little bit goes a long way too this is kind of a doe foot applicator it has a little well and it's a very very big so you don't need a lot like I'll take it out and scrape off most of what comes out on the applicator because you just don't need a lot to get a really nice um, full coverage look underneath the eyes I always set my concealer regardless um, just because I don't want anything to crease and this does the trick once I set it with powder I have absolutely no issue with it the last concealer I have um, actually I like better than the shape tape and that's why I waited um, to talk about this for the the end of the concealers this was a new launch in 2017 um, I was a little late to the bandwagon even then but when I got it I just could not put this down it is the NARS soft matte complete concealer and I use this in uh, medium slash dark to caramel this is for me like I said it beats the shape tape and don't let the word matte fool you it is not a dry formula it is creamy and beautiful blendable covers absolutely everything under the eyes it is such a gorgeous concealer moving on to foundations um, I have two foundations that I have been using for I believe well one I know definitely longer than 2017 and the second one perhaps maybe like mid 26 uh, 2016 and then the other two that I have I've been using them on and off but over the last I want to say three months I have been obsessed I don't use that word lightly you know that if you watch my channel been obsessed with these foundations as you know I like a matte finish I always also set my face with powder these foundations that I will talk about do not need to be set that is how mattifying they are they don't dry out the skin though don't show texture don't look cakey they just blew me away as I kept using them and using them I'm like this you know like this is really something so let's start with what I feel is that 
tried and true and just gorgeous foundation and people talk about it all the time and again this is very warranted because it's just a wonderful foundation it is the estee lauder double wear foundation it's what i'm wearing on my face today the hours that this foundation lasts is ridiculous i've seen women wearing it when they go to give birth and their skin looks amazing even after giving birth i personally wouldn't wear makeup to push a baby out of my my bottom there but um just looking at it, it's like okay this thing could last through the apocalypse lips it is creamy blendable just spreads out beautifully on the skin the second one that i have here also will be no surprise this has made like monthly favorites a lot it's the hourglass immaculate liquid powder foundation this is the old packaging they have a new packaging um that actually looks a little like the ordinary's um primer there that's the way the new packaging looks this is such a mattifying foundation. It is not cheap. I believe it's $56. This is one, and I've talked about it before, you have to work in sections. That's how quick it dries down. It doesn't dry out the skin, but it mattifies beautifully. I still set this extremely lightly with powder because this does get matte, but it keeps my skin mattified for hours. It looks beautiful on the skin. It uh, really makes your skin look airbrushed. It blends out beautifully. Again, even though it's an, it's an expensive foundation, it is worth every penny, especially if you have very oily skin or even just an oily T-zone. This is going to do what it says beautifully. The next one I have is one, again, that I've had for maybe about a year now, maybe a little uh, over. I wasn't using it too much when I first got it, but I've been using it a lot over the last several months, and it's the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Foundation. I was extremely late to the game. So like I said, I've only had it a little over a year. This has been out for much longer than that. One of the very best mattifying foundations I have ever used. I don't even need to set this with powder. Like I look at my face after in the mirror and I'm looking and I'm like, do I need to set? Do I need to set? I don't need to set. Like I'll set my under eyes because I do. I always do no matter what. This foundation is so mattifying doesn't dry out the skin, doesn't show texture, doesn't look very cakey on the skin, or cakey at all, not even very cakey. It doesn't look cakey at all. The last one is a newer product, but one that as soon as I got, and I've talked about this on my channel before, I was absolutely hooked. It is the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation. This as well as a mattifying foundation. Like I said, as you know, I like a matte finish, and because of my oily skin, that's what I tend to gravitate towards. This is another one that I do not have to set. It lasts all day, blends out beautifully, doesn't dry out the skin, doesn't show texture. You can see like that pattern here with these foundations that I have chosen. As much as they are very mattifying on the skin, they don't show texture, they don't look dry, they don't look cakey on the skin, just flawless, beautiful, airbrushed skin. For powder, um, I only have one product. I do have many powders, loose and pressed, that I absolutely love, but this one, when you see it, you'll remember if you've watched any of my videos that I just cannot get enough of this powder. Uh, this is the Flower Beauty Powder Up Loose Powder. I believe that they do not make this particular Particular one anymore they may have renamed it um, they do still sell two loose powders on their uh, website which I do have to try but this one is amazing it is so soft on the skin so light um, you know doesn't look cakey mattifies everything beautifully keeps me matte longer than if I don't use it or use something else packaging is absolutely gorgeous and um, I don't remember the cost I'm gonna link everything down below um, but it's just a couple of bucks it really wasn't expensive at all it is more of a drugstore priced item um, although not like a, a Catrice or a wet and wild product but still extremely affordable and for that price with what it does to the skin and how it makes the skin look it's just an absolutely gorgeous powder we're gonna move on to eyes now and I have two primers here that when you see them again a lot of the stuff is not gonna be a surprise if you've watched my channel and seen my videos you know what these two are gonna be the first one because it's one that I've been using the longest is my Mac paint pot in painterly um, I was so late to the game on this. Like this thing has probably probably been out for like 50 million years. Um, I probably started using this, I wanna say a year ago, about a year ago, maybe just a little less. 
it is, I, it, you know, it's obviously an eyeshadow. People use it to prep the, the eyes for eyeshadow. And the reason why I like this is because it's almost like a concealer. It turns the lid one shade. So if you have any discoloration, if you have any veining, um, that sort of thing, this is going to cover it up completely so that your eyelid is one color and whatever colors you put on your lid are not going to kind of interact with any of your skin coloring, any veining, any discoloration, that sort of thing. Then I had tried one. Um, this I've been using for a little over six months, I want to say. I've been using it for, for a while now. Um, it's the Essence I Love Stage Eyeshadow Base. And I don't remember why I got it or if I you know thought I was going to do a review on it or what, but it has turned out to quickly be one of my favorite primers. I have oily eyelids, so a lot of times I need to look for something that is not too emollient or too thick or anything like that. This is not that. So it looks like basically a concealer, kind of got a doe foot applicator there, um, but it does the very same thing. This is a little thinner of a formula than the MAC Paint Pot, but this does the exact same thing. It turns the lid one shade, gets rid of any discoloration, any veining, so that when you're putting on your eyeshadow colors, you're working with a kind of in a way a blank canvas. 349, I want to say that this is $20, maybe more than that. So for me, this the way I use it, the way I feel it works is a dupe for my painterly paint pot. I don't know if I'm going to repurchase the MAC one only because this is much, much cheaper. And for me, it does the exact same thing. I find myself reaching for this more often than the MAC paint pot, but it's just, it does a beautiful job. Again, a lot of times I'm kind of on the fence of what I'm going to use because I do have oily eyelids, but both of those products uh, don't, uh, you know, like they hold the eyeshadow there. The eyeshadow is not pilling or, or getting oily or anything throughout the day with both of those products. So they both work very, very beautifully on my eyes. Moving on to eyeshadows. I was on the fence about talking about this next product because it is an expensive product, but it really ended up being my 2017 favorite as far as eyeshadows go and a um, ensemble, I guess, if you will, that I reached for more times than not whenever I had a special occasion, a party, going out to dinner, date night, whatever. It's what I have on my eyes now. It is the Pat McGrath Dark Star 006 set. This came out quite some time ago. I don't know that it's still available, although I will tell you that recently she brought back a couple of um, packages, if you will, of products that she had put out way at the beginning. So I think she might have just been testing the waters with some of this stuff being like, you know, um, limited edition. So this may come back if it's something you're interested in. Starting out, it came with a uh, black smudge liner eye coal. So this pencil is like a thick pencil. Oh, let me put it up there. A thick pencil, if you can see. It's a very soft pencil, glides on like a dream, blends out beautifully. Um, you know, the color is there, it's saturated. And as you blend, you lose a little bit, but you don't lose so much that it's, you know, non-existent. It is a really nice pencil. And then I will follow up with the Dark Matter Pigment, which is basically a black. Um, it is beautiful, dark, black, matte, just gorgeous. What I'll do is I'll pick up an eyeshadow brush, put that over the pencil, make sure that the lid is a very, very dark, and then start blending out the top and the side so that it kind of gets more grayish and gets more blended. So the next thing that I do is I'll add the Ultraviolet Blue Pigment. This is what actually prompted me to buy this product. She had videos, you know, like teasing looks and stuff, and I could not stop watching these. So this is what it looks like. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'll put that right over the lid, all over the black, and then put it just above the lid a little bit, uh, the crease a little bit, and then start blending that out. It just adds such a beautiful dimension to that black. And a lot of people were probably like, if you put blue and black, you're gonna look like you have a black eye, but you really don't. It just turns it this like iridescent blue that just looks so gorgeous. So I'll put that on. And then what I tend to um, reach for, and I'll show you there's another one of them, uh, is the Astral White Pigment. It is basically kind of like a duochrome. You could see that there. 
um, white pigment, not really too glittery, but what I'll do is I'll pick that up with a flat brush and I'll just put that all over the lid and it just turns it this like snowy, white, just duochrome type of color. It is absolutely gorgeous. And again, this is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the ensemble that I would reach for most of the time throughout the year. And since I've purchased it, whenever I had a special occasion, this is what I reached for more times than not because I just love the finished look and I love the way everything wears. It also comes with a mercury pigment, which is the same as the Astro, but it's more goldy. Very, very pretty as well. I haven't tried this one yet just because I'm so used to the Astro white, but I think I, well, I'm going to have to use it because, <laughs> you know, it's part of the set, but it is just absolutely gorgeous and gold and it's basically the same thing. So it's going to do the same thing. It's going to add kind of an extra pop of dimension on top of the blue, which is then on top of the black. It also comes with a cyber clear eye gloss. I tried this when I first got it. Um, it's beautiful and iridescent. I'm hoping that the camera's picking that up just a bit, probably like right there. Um, it's what it, it's what it is, you know, it's an eye gloss. So I personally <clears throat> do not like it for the eye. I tried it and of course it's not going to dry down. So it's going to be very goopy, um, you know, crease and that sort of thing. So it wasn't my kind of strange when it came to wearing this on the eye. I do need to try to maybe wear it on the lips or maybe like on the high points of the so cheek. That is the set, you know, together again, it, it just, it is what it is. It was seriously my very favorite eyeshadow look to do in all of 2017 and I reached for it so many times. The next eyeshadows that absolutely had me floored and just in love over the year were the color pop pressed shadows. Now I have here just the regular pressed shadows that you can buy individually but they came out with a shit ton of palettes. Every week they were coming out with a new palette. After all I'm like dude slow your roll because they're only 16 bucks a piece, um, sometimes a little less than that, but when you're buying a lot, that adds up. Um, but these were basically my first kind of foray into the uh, pressed shadows from ColourPop, and I absolutely love them. They are pigmented, blendable, beautiful. Um, they just did a beautiful job with these pressed um, eyeshadows, and they're very inexpensive um, as well, which is great. I have on um, the bottom of my eyes this blue, which is two-piece, and then in the bottom corner, I have the black, which is called Let's Do It. I was waiting for this because when they first brought out the pressed shadows, they did not have a black. Um, I think a dark brown was like the darkest they had, and I'm like, dude, I need my matte black, and they finally came out with it, so I bought it. Their shimmers are absolutely beautiful. The mattes are really nice. Like I said, they blend out really, really beautifully. The palettes as well of the pressed shadows are very, very good. Um, I own several of them. Like I said, they're very inexpensive, but very good quality. And they give you a little bit of everything. You have warm palettes and palettes with pops of color and all shimmer palettes and, you know, combination of mattes and shimmers um, and glitter and that sort of thing. So I think they've did a really nice job with the pressed powder, um, pressed eyeshadow. If you don't like the super shock, cause they're a little like the consistency is a little weird, but these are just beautiful. The last eyeshadow, uh, palettes or brand that I want to shout out for 2017 is Juvia's place. Juvia's place, um, kind of came out of nowhere and people were talking about it. Like, what is this Juvia's place? And then all of a sudden it was just like, boom, they were everywhere. They exploded. This is a company, I think like ColourPop. Um, but even more so because the, the quality of the Juvia's Place shadows for me are a little better than the ColourPop. This is a true testament to the fact that you can put out top-notch quality product at a very inexpensive price. I own almost all the palettes, Sans 1. Actually, the newer one I wasn't really interested in because of the color range. Uh, but I have two here that are my favorite two. Uh, the first one is the Saharan 2. And then the artwork on these are just absolutely beautiful. And that is what that looks like. This I have underneath um, my eye on the bottom lash line there. These colors, like I said, all of their palettes that I own, that I have tried, the quality is just amazing. Color saturation is beautiful. Blendability is there. Wearability is there. I mean, you're going to get a long lasting eye look when you use these shadows. And then the second one, which is my favorite, is the Magic. This is a bigger one, as you can see. And 
this is what it looks like. It has so many gorgeous shades. Um, which one is it? I think uh, Yajidi, and I probably butchered that name. It's a dark navy, one of the darkest and like matte navies I have ever used. It is amazing. This other dark color here, which is Eif, um, also very beautiful. I've used a lot of these colors. Juvia's Place, again, is just one of the those brands that knows what they're doing, sticks to that formula, and keeps moving forward with it. Moving on to blushes now, I have three blushes um, that you have seen a lot on my channel here, but I always reach for them for the most part throughout my like regular life. The first one, and it's the one that I'm wearing today is the Balm's In Stain Blush, and this is in Houndstooth. This is, for me, one of the very best shades of blush anywhere. Formulation is gorgeous. Blendability is gorgeous. The lasting power, it just stays where you put it for hours and hours. I love this everyday kind of plummy mauve. It just looks so gorgeous on the cheeks. It looks healthy. You get that nice flush. Um, you still get color, but it still just looks very natural and beautiful. And what I love is that you can build up these blushes without looking like a clown. So that's always a good thing when you have blush. The second blush I have, you've seen a lot on my channel as well. This is also one uh, like the End Stain that was being used well before 2017. It's the Lorac Buildable Blush in Infrared. As you can see, probably a pattern. It's kind of the same color, just a little deeper on this. These blushes are hands down some of the very best blush formulas I have ever tried. They last and last for hours look gorgeous on the cheek blend out beautifully um color range is really nice you've got peaches and lighter colors um but as you can see i kind of like my purpley most but this is beautiful beautiful blush this is the mac extra dimension blush in wrapped candy this was a newer launch at that time and as you can see um kind of the same uh color uh family if you will this has a little more iridescence to it but man, when it goes on the cheeks, it is absolutely smoldering. It is beautiful and just lasts forever. This blush is one of those blushes that sometimes I'm like, okay, you need to put it down and use something else because if not, I'll keep reaching for this. I have only one highlighter um, that for 2017 was something that I kept reaching for. And this was definitely a highlighter that I had to tell myself like, you know, put the kibosh on it, <laughs> use something different. It was a highlighter that anytime I used it, I got wonderful, wonderful like feedback from people like, what are you wearing? What is that? What's going on? Um, I don't know if you could see it. I didn't put too, too much because it's a little purple, but you get a little bit of flush there. I also used it to highlight the inner corner of the eyes, which I love to use this for. It is the NYX Duo Chromatic Illuminating Powder, and this is in Lavender Steel. That's what it looks like. I was all about that purple highlighting life, you know, and when I saw this, I'm like, well, let me try it oh love it beautiful fell in love and like I said you get a little bit of that purple uh tinge to it but it's not sickening for me anyway I don't mind purple highlighters and I use this a lot in the inner corner of the eye even if I don't use it on my face and I always get compliments and questions as to what I am wearing on my face it's very soft um on the skin it blends out beautifully really lasts a long time and i like that you can build it up especially on the cheeks and it not look really crazy moving on to lashes um if you've watched a lot of my earlier videos you know i don't necessarily wear lashes on an everyday basis it's just an extra step that can sometimes get annoying for me um, because I don't have lashes of my own. So I have to put it right on my lid and make sure I'm not getting glue in my eye or anything else, that whole thing. I'm gonna start out with the lash that I've been using for the longest amount of time. Um, and I've talked about this before. I ordered these lashes from Beautylish. I had them probably about two or three months before I finally decided to put them on. And boy, when I did, I was like, holy moly. In fact, I think this was the eye look you know, the shadows I used the Pat McGrath set um, when I first used it with these lashes because it was my birthday, I believe, a special occasion. It's the Velour set in see-through. First of all, the packaging on this is so, so luxe. So you take off the sleeve and there's the packaging and there are the lashes. I'm hoping you can see them because I'm trying to get a good angle there for you to see them. Um, but these lashes are just absolutely gorgeous. They add enough drama 
without being too dramatic if you know what I mean they just fit perfectly and the one thing I love about velour lashes is that as you continue using them the shape stays I don't even have to curl them anymore because the shape is just there the curl is there the way I kind of bend them just stays the way it is um, they're a, a little more expensive than the ones I'm going to show actually a lot more expensive than the ones I'm going to show you but they are so worth it um, just again beautiful packaging they look absolutely gorgeous on the on the eyes they have several different styles but these for me the see-through style um, were the ones that I felt were going to work best for my eyes and they are absolutely beautiful and it says here that there's an average of 25 applications so I want to say that these are $27 maybe $29 so it's you know about a dollar an application which is really not bad at all for the look and um, feel that these lashes deliver the second lash that I have here is a newer uh, discovery quickly became like surpass velour and I'm going to tell you why it's the lash that I'm wearing now um I like for an everyday look like this adds a little you know drama a little a little depth there you can it looks different as if I wasn't wearing the lashes but they're still a phenomenal everyday lash if I wanted to wear this every day that would be fine I don't know that I would wear the velour every day it is the kiss lash couture in little black dress I purchased these because I did a video um, using products from the Allure Best in Beauty 2017 um, and these were mentioned so I said okay well let me try them I've tried Ardell which I like although some lashes after a while as I continue to wear them throughout the day they kind of fall because again I don't have lashes to hold them up so that is almost like my first um, prerequisite in in looking for a really good lash is it gonna keep its shape is it not gonna fall and have it like boom just straight ahead you know where if you're looking at me you're like what the hell's wrong with this chick's eyes um, these fit the bill beautifully uh, once I curl them as you can see they're just very light natural everyday lashes but they just feel so natural look so natural are easy to apply I still have to work with them a little bit because again I'm trying to get them in the perfect position so they're even you know from the distance from the inner corner and also just how they fit on my eyelid um, but this is far and away my very fav favorite lash that I've tried and I've tried several in the past the lore had just kind of roll to the forefront of all of the other lashes that I used um, and these actually for me are better than the Ardell's just because of the way they wear on my eyes so these are ones that I'm definitely going to be using for a lifetime as long as they keep making them so moving on to um, liner I have three liners here the first one is a gel liner and I've talked about this before on my channel it's the Inglot gel liner in 77 which is their regular black um, that's the way it looks like I have used this a lot and have hardly made a dent I don't know if you could see it like it's I'm missing this part but I've been using this for quite some time I love it because it is very black very matte glides on like an absolute dream on the eyelid um, and lasts a very long time doesn't flake on me I could wear it all day doesn't flake um, you know doesn't start crumbling or anything it's just a beautiful beautiful eyeliner for tight lining um, I've been using this for years I usually use this to tight line it is the Modster um, smooth ride supercharged eyeliner from Ardency in in black it is just creamy it applies beautifully you don't have to you know some eyeliners you kind of have to keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing to get color payoff not with the monster pencil it goes on there it's creamy it lasts which I really like it doesn't bleed onto the um, you know like the side of the eyes which is another thing if I'm tight lining I don't want that sucker bleeding all over the place another eyeliner that I've been using probably for a little over six months I've used this a lot on my channel it's the Revlon color stay two-in-one angled Kajal so one side has like a brush which I don't use and then the other side hopefully you can see it it's like an angled um, pencil there what I like about this and well the way I let me start with the way I use it what I will do is you know how when you put eyeshadow on your lash line so I will start with that pencil and I will draw as close to my lash line as possible bring it down just a bit extremely creamy if I want a really smoky bottom 
like lash line with black, I will start with that. And then I will add black eye, um, shadow and buff it out even further. What I like about this pencil is that as the day progresses, it kind of smokes itself out. It doesn't look patchy or weird or run, but it just, it adds the smokiness to the eye that I, I can't even describe. It is absolute perfection. So this is one of those discoveries for 2017 for me that was like, oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. Because when you read Kajal, they are creamier, they blend out more, um, they kind of tend to run because that's just the way they are. But for me, this pencil is perfect. It doesn't you know, smoke itself out in a messy way. It just looks really beautiful and really blown out. If you like really blown out look, this is a really nice eyeliner to do that with. So we're gonna finish off with lips. First of all, lip liner. I don't line my lips too much um, in my everyday life, unless it's a special occasion. It's the NARS Precision Lip Liner in Le Lavendu. I am making a nice dent in this pencil. This is what it looks like. It's, um, kind of a purpley mauvey color. I'm hoping you can pick that up. I'm going to swatch what I'm going to show you next right next to it. It is the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment in London Calling. What I like about this specific product, when you go on the NARS website, you pick a lipstick, they will give you the matching or coordinating lip liner, which I absolutely love. That is what I'm wearing on my lips today. Um, I do have a little bit of gloss just a bit on top to keep it um, wet looking and not drying. This still is one of the very best matte formulas that I have tried. The applicator on this is very interesting. It kind of tapers up a bit, um, but it's just absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to swatch this right next to the lip liner and that's the combo. It is amazing. I absolutely love it. Also another product that I believe I may have used once or twice on my channel, but I definitely do use this a lot in my everyday life is an Urban Decay lipstick. This is when they came out with like the 100 lipsticks. Um, that Some were matte, some were cream, some were super matte, some were soft mattes. Uh, this is a cream lipstick and it's in the shade Rapture. I tried this when they were giving out all the samples. And as you can see, it's kind of the same vein there, like a mauvey purple. I am going to put this on the other side of the lip liner. It's a little more pinky in, in the hue or the finished product, but it is such a comfortable lipstick. Now, again, it's a cream, so it is going to transfer if you eat or drink, but it is comfortable and beautiful on the lips. When you're putting it on the lips, it kind of just spreads really nicely. It's not something you have to tug at. Um, and I just love it. So if you're not eating or drinking, this can actually last a couple of hours because I've worn it before at work where I wasn't eating or drinking for, you know, like a couple of hours time frame, and this lasted beautifully. The last one that I have to talk about is from Deck of Scarlet. I have talked about this a lot, especially when I got it, that I was absolutely in love with this combo, but I wasn't using it because they don't sell their products separately. So, um, they finally started doing that. So now all of their products on Deck of Scarlet's website are a la carte. So you can order the lip stuff, the palettes, individual um, uh, blushes and highlighters and all that stuff. But I wasn't using it for a while because I didn't want to run out. This is the One Stroke Graphic Lip Crayon in Mia. So creamy, so beautiful. See if you can see the color there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it next to the Urban Decay. This is more of a grayish taupey purple and I didn't think I was going to like it when I put that's it right there when I put it on as you can see it, it is more gray than these two so what I'll tend to do is put like a a, a pink uh, gloss over it or something and I kind of just dot it around to give it a little more um a, a little more brightness if you will because this for me tends to be just a bit too dark the formula is beautiful it's creamy it just when it rolls on lips, it's just like butter. It's absolutely beautiful. And I love the fact, again, that they started selling these because once I figured out, like I went online to see if they sold them separately. And when I figured out that they didn't, I kind of stopped using it because I didn't want to run out. Um, but as you can see, they kind of look the same, but these are the lip products that I really ran to um, during 2017 when I, you know, discovered them. These are just the ones that once I tried, I was just absolutely hooked. 
Um, so that brings me to the end of my Best in Beauty 2017. I hope you enjoyed everything that you've seen. If you want me to talk about any products um, in future videos a little more, use something in a tutorial, please just leave that below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and spending a few moments of your day with me. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also click the little bell so you get alerted as to whenever I upload new videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!